Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to look at topic four, lesson two, um, concept of what a rational function is. So the concept box, rational functions. Just as rational numbers is a number that can be expressed, the ratio of two integers, a rational expression is the expression that can be expressed as a ratio of two polynomials. So P of X over Q of X can be expressed as a rational expression. Q of X cannot equal zero because if Q of X equals zero, then we have an undefined function. So a rational function is any function defined by a rational expression such that R of X, which is rational function, is equal to P of X divided by Q of X. And the domain of R of X is the values of X for which X or Q of X does not equal zero because again, that goes back to the undefined denominator. So the function g of x equals 4x divided by x minus 3 is a rational function. And in our case, it's undefined, or the domain does not include 3, or x equals 3. All right, so let's go with example 2. So we're going to jump straight into this example. How do you find... vertical and horizontal asymptotes of a rational function. So we want to know the vertical asymptotes, only the vertical asymptotes of this graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is remember that the denominator gives us our asymptotes. The denominator gives us where our function is not defined. Therefore, that is going to be my asymptote. So in this case, I'm going to look at when the denominator here is equal to zero to find my vertical asymptote. All right, so I'm going to set x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals zero. And I'm going to factor this. So two values that multiply to give me 12 but add to get me 7 are 3 and 4. All right, 3 plus 4 gives me 7. 3 times 4 gives me 12, which means that at x equals negative 3, and negative 4, we have a vertical asymptote. So vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 3 and negative 4. All right, so let's look at this graphically. Um, I'm going to pull up my calculator to get out of this. Let's graph our function in the calculator. So parentheses, my function is 3x minus 2, 3x minus 2, divided by x squared. And notice how I put the parentheses. Um, there is a way to make a, one number over the other in this calculator. But for right now, I'm just going to use this little divide and make sure that my numerator and my denominator are in the parentheses, just in case anybody has a TI-83 out there. I graph my function. Make sure I have everything in there correct. x squared plus 7, oh, 3x minus 2, x squared plus 7x plus 12, x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right, so it looks like we have an asymptote here and here. Let me go to second table set. Sorry, I have my calculator still in ask instead of auto. Let's start at zero. My table's gonna grow at one. Let's go here. Is it negative three and negative four? And notice here at negative 3 and negative 4, I get an error. And that error is saying that it's undefined. So already I could tell you that we do have asymptotes at negative 3 and negative 4. All right, so let's look at the true graph. We didn't get to see the full graph. This um, tells us the full graph. And there we go. Part two, how do you find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of a rational function? What are the horizontal asymptotes for the graph? 
All right, so let's go here. Let's look at the horizontal asymptotes. So if the function, when the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, let's see, let's see, let's actually go back here. Maybe it states it here. So to identify the horizontal asymptote, we have to consider three cases. Do do. Actually, I'm just going to jump straight into what they're saying here. Case one, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So this is x to the power of one and this is x to the power of two. So the degree here of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. As the values increase, the values of the denominator get very large in relation to the numerator. The values of the function get closer and closer to zero. Basically what this is saying is if I have x over x squared, <clears throat> x squared is growing a lot faster than x. So the denominator has more of a pull. So as this gets bigger, this is getting bigger a lot faster. So what we're going to look at is it's going to grow like that, or shrink, I guess. All right, so we get closer and closer to that value of zero. All right, case two, if the numerator is greater than the denominator, again, this is getting bigger and bigger. So if we're looking at this going to infinity and this going to infinity, then um, this we're going to get into bigger and bigger numbers. It's just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. So as the values increase, the values of the numerator get very large in relation to the denominator. The value function continues to increase. When the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. Because again, we'll see something like this, x squared over x. And it'll just look like that. It'll just increase exponentially. There is no, um, basically this will cancel this out in, the, in our case, and this would be x. So that gives you an idea that this just grows. We don't have a horizontal asymptote if the degree is bigger. Case three, the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same. Using long division, we get something that looks like this. And as the value increases, we get closer and closer to two. We get closer and closer to, again, using the long division, we get it into a format where we have a vertical shift up to units. So our new horizontal asymptote is two. In this case, you will have to do the, the long division, you will have to divide it out to find how many times it goes into the numerator. Or I could just do x, I could just do this, a little trick. If I were to take this one and I have 2x squared, I have x squared here. You take the coefficient here, divide it by the coefficient here, and that is going to be your horizontal asymptote. All right, so you don't have to go through the whole long division, you just have to look at the coefficients, your leading coefficients in that case. All right, so in our case, oh, I just deleted everything, go back. Our numerator is a degree one, our denominator is a degree two. So essentially we are growing a lot quicker in the denominator. And so our vertical asymptote, sorry, sorry, horizontal asymptote is equal to zero. All right, good cases. Um, does it actually tell us here? No. So this is y equals zero, by the way. Oh yeah, it does. It does in case one. All right, so here is yours. Your try it, work on it, try it, figure this out. And I'll see you in the next video.